what's up everyone today we're going to be tackling this groovy rendering blender as you can see there's lots of interesting stuff going on in the animation lots of vibrant colors and interesting patterns morphing around some really mind-bending stuff there it loops seamlessly and it's actually really easy to make which you'll see as i walk you through the steps and if you do make a variation of this render feel free to tag me on instagram as i'd love to see what you're doing with the tutorials i'm putting out my handle is at nemmotion and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video anyway let's get on with it all right, so once you've got Blender open, we're just going to delete that default cube. So hit X and delete. Now hit Shift A, we're going to add a mesh and we'll add a torus. Now I want you to come over to this window here and just expand it. And we're going to adjust some of these settings. So we're going to adjust the major radius. Just bring it out a bit, say about to there. And then we'll pump up the minor radius too. Just give it a lot of depth. Now click out of that, click on our camera. We're going to hit Alt G and then Alt R. That resets the location and the rotation. So now you can see your camera's in the middle. Now when you hit RX90, that's going to point the camera along the Y axis. Now I'm just going to switch over to wireframe view. I'm just going to hit G and then Y. I'm just going to bring the camera down along the Y axis so we're inside the donut. Now if you hit zero, you can see where we're getting at now. I'm going to go back into solid state, hit zero again so we're inside our torus. Now I want to make a few more adjustments to this torus, but as you can see that window that we're using for the editing has gone and there's actually no way of getting this back once you start playing around with other objects in the scene. Um, you can go in edit mode and manually edit some of these vertices, but I quite like the features in that window. I find it quite intuitive. So I'm just going to delete the torus, click on the torus, hit X, delete, and hit Shift A again, add mesh, and just add your torus again. It should have all the settings as previous, and now you have your window again. So I just want to pump up the minor a bit more, these minor segments, just pump them up. So we really smooth out this little uh, thingy in the middle and I want to pump up the major segments as well. And we don't want to go too crazy with this, but I think that looks quite good. And I think I'll adjust my minor radius as well to about there. Now, we're done with that. Hit S on my torus. So hit S, now hit Z. And we're just going to scale it down on the Z axis and just bring it sort of in a bit. I think about there looks good. And now we're going to come to our camera and we're just going to widen up the angle a bit. So click on the camera settings here and on the focal length, we're going to bring that down Say about 26 millimeters, I think looks good. You can go even wider if you want. Let's say 20 millimeters. Right, so that's pretty much all the modeling done. With This is the only object we're gonna use in the scene. The rest is done with texturing. So I'm gonna turn off my overlays here and we're gonna jump into the shader editor. So I want you to come to the top corner here. And we're gonna drag in a new window. And we're gonna to come to edit a type here. And we're gonna to go to shader editor and just bring this in. And we're gonna to go to material properties. And we're just gonna add a new material. And just to see what we're doing in the material editor, we're gonna actually go into render mode. So come back to your viewport on the left and hit a Z and then eight. And that's gonna take you into rendered mode. Now you can see there's some reflections of our lamp in the scene. We're just gonna delete this light here because we're not gonna be using that at all in this scene. So just hit X and delete. We're gonna to go to the world properties and we're gonna change the color to black and you're not gonna be able to see anything yet. Now let's start adding some light to the scene. So with our torus selected and in our shader editor, we're going to delete this principal BSDF. We're not going to be using this. Now hit Shift A, add a new node, and we're going to add a mix shader. We're going to plug the mix shader into the surface, and we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to add an emission shader. So click on that, pop that here, and we'll just plug the emission into the first input of your mix shader. All you can see is white, and that's because the emission color is white. So that looks pretty awful right now. So zero again, back into camera view. Pump the strength up to eight, so we get a nice strong emission. So hit Shift A, come to Shader, and we're going to add a transparent BSDF. Just pop that here, plug it in to the input below the emission shader. And we're going to use a texture to decide the way that these nodes interact with each other. So I want you to hit Shift A, and we're going to add a texture, and we're going to add a wave texture. Now pop that here, and I want you to plug the FAC into the FAC of your mix shader. You can kind of see what that's doing now. We're getting these sort of streaks along the object, as you can see. I want to have a bit more control over the way these two nodes talk to each other. So I want to add a color ramp. So hit Shift A, go to convert a color ramp, and you just want to pop that in between the wave texture and the mix texture. And now, as you see, once you start dragging in these dials, but if you drag the white one in, you're going to see you get these really cool stripes. So we're going to leave the black around here and we'll say the white around here. And you can actually change the interpolation between the uh, the two color dials. You can change this to constant and this will give the texture sort of hard edges in between the colors. So I think we should set that to constant. Play around with these till they're fairly thin. I think around there looks good. And now as you pan around, you can sort of see 
where we're getting at with this. Stay in camera mode and you can play around with the scale on your wave texture. I think leaving it at two looks good. But as you can see, as we orbit around, it's not actually transparent yet. You can actually see the black is blocking the white behind it. Now that's not what we want. We want the black bit to be actually transparent. And the reason we're not getting this transparency is that there's a few parameters hidden within the material settings. So come back over here to this red thing and we want to scroll all the way down and you'll see blend mode here. You need to change that to alpha hashed. And now you can see the white lines are behind the black. You're getting true transparency here. So back into camera mode, we're going to start animating this wave texture to create some interesting movement around the object. So I want you to click on your wave texture and you need to make sure you have node wrangler installed. So go over here to edit preferences, go to add-ons, just come over here and search for node wrangler and make sure you have that installed because I'm going to be using some shortcuts which you'll need this plugin for. All right, so click on your wave texture, hit control T, that's going to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate. So we're just going to bring these here. And now when you start rotating one of the axes, you'll see the kind of effect that we're trying to get. So obviously we're going to animate this rotation parameter on this mapping node. So we're going to set the end to about 450. All right, so let's start animating this. So we're going to go to frame one. We're going to move it on the Y axis and we're going to hit I on the keyboard and that's going to apply a keyframe on your mapping node. Now we're going to come to 451 and we're going to hit 360 on the Y axis and we're going to hit I again on the keyboard and that's going to add a keyframe so we get a full rotation of this texture because the endpoint is at 360 degrees it's going to loop perfectly uh, make sure that you apply the keyframe on frame 451 otherwise you get a duplicate frame when you render the animation so let's give that a play and have a look now that looks really cool what i would say is that i noticed that it sort of slows down and accelerates now the way to do that is to change the interpolation. Um, I can't see the keyframes in my timeline when I click on the mapping node. So I'm just going to change this to the graph editor. And you should be able to find them under Taurus shader node tree. You'll see it's just here. Now just in this area here, hit A, then T, and set the interpolation to linear. And that should fix that. I'm going to bring this back to my timeline now. Great. If you're not getting similar movement to me as well in your animation, make sure the texture coordinate has the generated output plugged into the vector of the mapping nodes. Sometimes it's set to a different position at default. And also make sure you have the same parameters on your wave texture as I do. Play around with this as well. I think it looks good how it is, but you can play around with things like distortion if you want to make it really abstract and also some other things. I'm just going to bring the detail down as well. Right, time to add some color to the scene. So we have our emission shader. Don't be confused by the fact that this is white and this is white. The white on the transparent BSDF has nothing to do with the color of the object. This is actually the black area that we're seeing where it's fully transparent. Um, it's just black because of our world settings. So if you change the color, it can be anything you like. But yeah, we're going to leave it as black. But on the emission, this is where we're going to be getting our color. So just pop that out of the way and we'll move this here. We're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add a color ramp. Just pop that there, plug the color into the color. So hit Shift A, add a texture, add a noise texture. We'll pop that there, plug the fact into the fact. And now as you start dragging these in, you're going to see the noise texture is affecting the black and the white of the emission. But we want to make it a bit more interesting. So, so we're going to pick some vibrant colors and I'm going to leave it to you guys to decide which colors you want to choose. But I'm just going to have a play around with this now. I'm going to make one a sort of deep purpley pink. On the black, I'm going to change that nice blue. And I'm going to add a slider. So click on this plus. I'm just going to add one in the center. Now we're going to make this a sort of red, I think. Crunch these in together. Just play around with these sort of parameters till you find a nice blend of colors that you like. And remember, you can play with a noise texture as well. So I might pump the scale probably going to drop the detail a bit and you can also play around with the interpolation on the color ramp you've got all these different options to choose from you can do ease which sort of um, smudges the colors into each other a bit you can do cardinal linear which is what we have it set to b spline and then constant which will be a bit more choppy i quite like the look of ease 
But really guys, I want you to play around with the colors and find different ones that you like. Next step, I'm gonna plug this mapping node into the noise texture as well. So we get the same animation on the noise texture as we do on the wave texture. And now hit play. And you get this, which I think looks pretty cool. Great, I'm just gonna bring this in now, get rid of this window. And remember, you can play around with the focal length as well on your camera if you want it wider. You get these really sort of abstract looks. But I love I like it around here. I think that's a good spot. Cool, so that's looking good. I think we're gonna now we're gonna go to our scene settings and we're gonna make sure we're in EV to do this. And I'm just gonna add a bit of bloom. That's very strong, so we're going to bring the intensity down. Let's pop it down to about, say, 0 0.09. Um, actually, we're going to go to our color management down below. We're going to change the look to very high contrast. And we'll drop the gamma to about 0.9. I just think it makes the colors pop a bit more. Now, it looks cool, but I think there's a bit more we can do. So we're going to actually go to our compositor to just add a few more finishing touches to the scene. So first thing you need to do just pick a frame, let's say this one, and we're going to render an image. So hit F12, just render that image, and you can close that, and we're going to go into the compositor. So come to compositing, click use nodes, and you can see our rendered image is here. That's obviously a bit small to work with, so we're going to add a viewer node. So hit shift A, output, viewer, we're going to pop that there, plug the image into the image, and now you can see your rendered image. Just gonna move that over there and just bring this down. Now I want to hit Shift A and I'm gonna add a lens distortion. I'll just plug that in between, and now we're gonna pump up this dispersion parameter to about 0.3. We'll say 0.4 actually, and that's pretty much it for the composite in. Uh, just make sure you plug the lens distortion into the composite node as well. If you don't do that, then when you render it out, it's not gonna actually render out the composite in. It's just gonna render it out as the image. So just make sure you've got this plugged into the composite node before you render the animation. So just save your work before you render it. Now let's go to our output settings. We're going to change the output. This is where the rendered file is going to go. Now you want to make sure you save it somewhere you can find it. So just click on that. We're going to change the file format to FFmpeg video. Encoding, we're going to set that to MP4. Output quality, we'll set that to Perception Lossless. Now all you've got to do is come to Render and hit Render Animation and you're done. Alright guys, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, if you did please hit the like button and subscribe as it really helps me grow the channel and helps me put out more content like this. Also consider supporting me on Patreon, that's the best way to directly support me if you find value in the work that I'm putting out. And if you did make it to the end and you have a final product that you want to share, feel free to tag me in your renders, I'd love to see what you guys are doing with the tutorials I'm putting out. That's at Nebmotion, I'll be leaving my handle down there, uh, just tag me on Instagram and I'll even share it on my story. And one last thing, if you want to play around with the project file, you're welcome to do that. I'll be leaving a link in the description, or you can find that on my website. That's nedmotion.co.uk.